Uh, just to start this thing off, I want to tell you, uh, I'm Andy Harris. I want to tell you guys uh, how it's going to go down tonight. Um, we've got eight storytellers, and uh, each are going to tell a story for five minutes, and then we're going to switch it up. So one thing that I, uh, my experience with writing a story is it was hard, and it brought up a lot of stuff, and it left me very vulnerable. And so I'm just going to go on the hunch that maybe my friends here all maybe have some of the same feelings. So. When the story's over, whether it was good or bad, I want you to clap as loud as you can. Get <laughs> and, uh, you know, make them think they're the great. Make us all think that we are the greatest storytellers on earth. So with that, my story, I've already forgotten the title to, so I'll just start. The year was 1988. I was eight, year old, eight years old, and my dad got a business promotion. He packed us up from our two-story house in Durham, North Carolina, and moved us to a house on the hill in Birmingham, Alabama. My new school, Best Davian Hills Elementary. My new best friend, Adam Sherman. We were exactly the same height and scrawniness. He looked like my body double, only with blonde hair. Adam was better than me at school and sports, but that didn't bother me at all. It felt good to have him as my best friend, and we had good times together. I remember the floor of our gymnasium was covered in green carpet, and the walls were beige sections of thin sheet metal that could have easily been blown down in one of those frequent tornadoes. Our PE teacher had a windswept haircut and a t-shirt that read, Can you dig? <laughs> we were asked to partner up and create a jump rope routine to any song we liked. Adam and, I, Adam and I did ours to Paradise City by Guns N' Roses, and it was a hit. Another time, I was to spend the night over my friend's house, and when he answered the front door, he was really excited. Come on in! Me and my dad are watching this awesome new television show. It's called Cops. <laughs> that was my introduction into reality television. When we weren't playing air guitar to Bon Jovi on my bunk beds, we were eating fireballs and Jolly Ranchers and watching the junior high girls play softball down the street. When my dad brought me the news that our family was moving back to North Carolina, Adam had also found out that he too would be moving to Arlington, Texas. And Fort Worth, Texas. We only had a couple of months left, and the last day we were to hang out together, we decided that we would go, see the, go to the movies to see Ghostbusters 2. The problem was, the night, before, uh, the night before was my first stay up all night and don't go to bed birthday party at another friend's house. My mom let me sleep in, and when I finally came to, it was already getting dark outside. I called Adam and apologized, and he invited me over to say goodbye. When I got there, he said he had something to show me, and I followed him down to the back of the house near the garage. He said, I don't want anybody to see this, and he gave me his ear. He continued to write for the next few years. He played baseball and basketball and seemed to be having a good life. At that age, sitting down and writing letters was not on my list of priorities, but he kept sending them. Sometimes I would write back, but he would totally, but to be totally honest, I was a horrible pen pal. Soon enough, I stopped hearing from Adam, and that hug in the back of the house near his garage was the last memory I had of him. Until Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> back in July. This year, I was cleaning out some boxes at my parents' house when I found an old envelope from Adam. It had a basketball where the stamp was supposed to be, Exhibit A. I always figured he had turned out to be some jock that was really smart and went to a really good college and definitely had a family by now. So I got curious and looked him up on Facebook. After five or ten of those profile pictures, I came across one that looked very familiar. It was Adam. To be honest, he looked, as, he looked the same, only now he had some facial hair. As I looked through his pictures, I was definitely wrong about him. He looked like a really great guy with a beautiful girlfriend and was rich with friends. So I wrote him and I asked, I know this may be weird, but did you grow up in Birmingham, Alabama? The email reply was titled, Whoa, and it went like this. July 17th, man, where have you been? I figured I'd run into you online at some point. You look so different, but I guess that's what happens when you grow up. You're in Richmond? He thought I was in Richmond. I have some friends out there this weekend, actually. I've been living here in New York for about seven years. Came up to work at a recording studio, and now I'm working for Apple. It's cool to see that you're a musician now. I was in a few bands as well. I don't know if you remember this, but I have vivid memories of us rocking out to Paradise City. Great to hear from you, man. I'd love to hear what you're up to, Adam. Yes, I finally found Adam Sherman. So I wrote back a long email telling him about where I lived and what I did and how cool it was to catch up with him. I mean, I really got excited for this. The next day at work, I must have checked my Facebook five or ten times to see if he had written me back. Then a day went by, then two, then three, then a week, then a 
couple weeks. So I finally wrote him back. Did you get my last email? Maybe it was deleted or something. A week later, I received a message from him. It read, hey, dude, I did. I'm the worst. I'll hit you up soon. So that was the last I heard from Ash. <laughs> when I was 14, I couldn't sit still long enough to write him a letter. Now that I finally found him in New York City on Facebook, he won't write me back. Thanks for listening. <laughs>